As Wanaka's Wallace family prepares for their first Christmas following the death of brothers Matthew and Nick, the transport accident investigator has released its interim reports into the crashes which took their lives. Matthew Wallace was killed when the Robinson he was piloting plummeted into Lake Wanaka in July. His younger brother Nick died alongside two Department of Conservation workers when the Hughes helicopter he was piloting crashed shortly after takeoff in October. Our Otago Southland reporter Timothy Brown has been reading the reports. The two Wallace boys were from a tight-knit family of four brothers and piloted helicopters owned by the family's business. The Commission's interim reports don't make any findings on the crashes but provide the first insights into what happened. The first accident saw a Robinson R44 helicopter crash into the Stevenson, Stevenson's arm area of Lake Wanaka on the 21st of July this year and in the second a Hughes helicopter crashed into the ground near Wanaka Airport on the 18th of October. That's Chief Commissioner Jane Mears. She says there's evidence that during the first crash, the Robinson piloted by Matthew experienced mass bumping, contact between an inner part of the rotor and the main drive shaft, before it crashed into Lake Wanaka. The rotor blade may also have entered the cabin during the fatal flight, damaging flight instruments. The evidence shows that the teeter stops for both blades were crushed which indicates that the helicopter experienced mass bumping at some point in the accident sequence. And there's also evidence that the main rotor blade has struck and entered the cabin in flight. There are score marks on the blade that match screws on the canopy bow, and there are scoured paint on the screws. Jane Mears says it is too early to say if the mass bumping contributed to the crash, but the Commission's Chief Investigator of Accidents, Captain Tim Burford, says mass bumping is known to be prevalent in Robinsons, so much so the Commission has asked the company to investigate further testing of the issue. That testing is ongoing, though the problem is not limited to only Robinsons. The Robinson helicopters in New Zealand, there's a high rate of mass bumping problems and that's been itemised in our, in our watch list. There are other kinds of helicopters that are also susceptible to mass bumping, so it is not just Robinson helicopters. Jane Mears says the crash which killed Nick Wallace, along with dock workers Paul Honderlink and Scott Theobald, appears to have been caused by a pair of over trousers flying out of the cabin and wrapping around the tail rotor. Since the crash it has emerged there have been several incidents of doors on the helicopter opening during flight, which were not reported as they were meant to be. Evidence has also revealed three incidents in the month prior to the accident in which the doors on the accident helicopter opened in flight. Effective safety management depends on such incidents being reported to the operator and investigated, but none of these occurrences was recorded in the operator's incident reporting system. The investigation into the crash is ongoing, but evidence suggests the left door of the helicopter opened during the fatal flight. In a statement, Jonathan Wallace, older brother of Matthew and Nick, said the Alpine Group is cooperating fully with investigators. He characterised the apparent breakup of the Robinson R44 as disturbing, and says the unexplained door separation of the Hughes is equally of concern. The Department of Conservation will not comment while the investigations are ongoing. Retired helicopter pilot Dennis Laird says while he cannot comment on the interim reports, New Zealand's helicopter accident rate is too high. Yesterday the Director of Civil Aviation in a, in a weekly um, update commented particularly on the helicopter industry and the, and the accident rate um, and where that fits compared with other industry. And I think it's something like 75 times the average accident rate, um, albeit it's a high-risk industry. The investigations into both crashes remain open and the Commission says its final findings may differ from what has been released in today's interim reports. In Otago, for Checkpoint, Timothy Brown.